Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wrong. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Company fired me and then begged me to come back, and now pays me a lot more. The second story. Stupid manager decided to fire me because I was overweight. He didn't know he would be fired soon. The third story. I towed my neighbor's car because she called the police on me. Today's first story is, Twas the night before my resignation. I was brainwashed at an early age that loyalty and hard work would add countless zeros to your paycheck. I remained optimistic after receiving year after year of 3% raises and working holidays. I missed my children's first steps, their school functions, and other life events so I could make the CEO more money. After the passing of my stepfather and my boss calling me during the funeral, asking me to troubleshoot an issue while my mom cried into my shoulder, enough was enough. I changed companies and made a personal pledge to put family first and my career a distant third or fourth. Fast forward to present day, I find myself as the cornerstone of our department. Many of our clients' processes are automated through custom API developed by me. I have maintained a thorough documentation library on how to support the API the reports and all of its dependencies. I've offered to train backup so we're not single-threaded. My manager told me no way, we would never do anything to lose you. Up to now, life was good. At the beginning of December, ABC Company was audited by the government and found to be out of compliance. They hired my company to regain their compliance by the end of the year or risk fines near $750,000. ABC Company dragged their feet getting us the information we needed to start on the work. I save my vacation days so I can take the week between Christmas and New Year's off. I spend it with my kids to make up for all the time I lost when I worked when they were younger. This time is very precious to me. Last week and this week I've been notifying the project manager and my manager about my time off. I let them know I would need ABC Company's information soon so I can start on it. I offered to work extra hours to ensure my piece would be finished prior to Christmas Eve. On Tuesday, my manager calls me and tells me ABC Company finally sent the data over I requested over two weeks ago. He looked beaten because he knew what was about to happen. I told him who I should I walk through the project with because I'm off after Christmas. My manager says, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you to work. I declined your time next week. I asked, what happens to my vacation time? My boss says, I'm sorry, you know the rules, use it or lose it. I fought for you, but HR wouldn't budge. I drafted my resignation letter after the call, set it to delay delivery on Monday at 8 a.m., and closed up CHOP. ABC Company will pay $700,000 because nobody knows how to program that system, since there's no backup. Our other clients will be expecting their monthly, quarterly, and annual reports within the first week of January. No one knows how to do this. We had six projects in progress involving extensive API and reporting. Now those projects are dead in the water. Seven clients prepaid for API and automation upgrades in 2022 quarter one. I don't know what will happen to those. Please remember family first. You never get that time back. Notable comments by OP on how the fine may affect ABC. The ABC company may not learn anything. To them a 700K fine is a drop in the bucket and will be passed to their clients or docked from a bonus fund. Based on how the contract is structured, my company might be in breach of contract, but I'm not a lawyer and I don't care. I have to worry about the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogy and watching this with my kids. They never saw it. On OP's work contributions. Here's the funny thing. Every other time I submitted an analysis or a prediction, the business made a decision on it and ended up in a better financial position as a result. When COVID hit Washington and I suggested WFH immediately to prevent infection, immediately implemented. When I showed productivity numbers increased through the business, the business did not renew their lease and went permanently WFH. When the business wanted to help small businesses, I suggested three businesses. I negotiated the investment deal, and the businesses have grown over 400% and are breaking sales records. However, this one time they don't listen to me, they may lose big. More background info. I understand the business side of things and we're a small to medium-sized firm. Prior to this, my manager and I had a great relationship. The CEO helped me move to my new house. I understand the impact of my resignation will have on the business and that weighed heavily on my mind. Our client is a large company, and large companies are slow to produce data and information. They move at their own pace. They are Karens to the medium-sized firms when they're at fault. I would be open to negotiating to working half days if someone would be supporting me from a QA standpoint, 
or allowing me to roll over the week so I could take off spring break to spend it with my kids. But there was no discussion. It was use it or lose it. On regulatory agencies. Working with the government regulatory agencies before, you do not mess around with them. The agents are no nonsense. Paperwork is in order and by the book. If they say the field only accepts 250 characters and you send 249 characters, tough luck. You failed. Back to the end of the line. We will evaluate you next week maybe. We don't care if it's a five minute fix. You are shut down. Please pay your fine. We accept check, visa, and MasterCard. On wife's stance. For the record, my wife was extremely supportive of my decision. She said I'd rather lose the house than lose our family. That told me I made the right decision for me. My oldest son is nine. This will be the third Christmas I spend with him. I was forced to work his first six, including his first. The only memories I have are videos and pictures. I miss both of my son's first steps, their first words and losing their first Christmas. You never get that time back. No amount of money can replace that. On scheduled email send. Note, I left the call non-committal, but I set the email to be sent on Monday at 8 a.m. I didn't want my manager to have a ruined holiday weekend, but I also want to state for the record, I never agreed that I would work next week. My manager told me I had to work next week. I would lose my vacation time and he apologized. He wished me a Merry Christmas and ended the conversation. Notable comments by OP. On documentation, OP left. The funny thing is I tried to train other people on how to do my processes. My manager believed you aren't going anywhere, this is a waste of time. But I documented the hell out of my processes. Here's an easter egg. In my documentation, if you go to the appendix, you'll see troubleshooting. Then you'll see corrupt files. CSV, TXT, XML. It will tell you how to roll back the environment to the previous instance prior to load. Then you load the correct CSV file. Then it will lead you on how to update everything back to current status. No pending queries. On value of OP's time. I think it was Priceline name your price. He was hoping I didn't know the market or I didn't have the confidence to write a large amount. He was banking I would say something around $1,000 so they could take advantage of me. Present day. Throughout the day, the manager and CEO send a barrage of texts and phone calls. One of my coworkers finds the documentation and fixes the reports. Later in the afternoon, he served corrective action because he was accountable for processing the corrupted file and did not find the documentation faster. He tells me the manager, HR, and the CEO spent all night finding evidence to support the corrective action. I tell him to get his resume up to date. Total downtime, 16 hours. Around 3 p.m., I get a phone call from a new number. It was the client's business manager, the liaison between the former company and the client. I explained to her the delay of getting data until Christmas, despite multiple requests, the loss of a full week of PTO, the text messages and phone calls, and my offer to come back to help her company reach compliance. The business manager told me a different story. The manager and CEO called her earlier to inform her I quit, and I'm stalling the project as ransom in order to obtain more money. I explained how one could skew this view, but I'm not actively seeking to return. After observing how the company treats their employees and after being treated post-resignation, I have no interest in returning to the company. The business manager asks me what terms, rates, signing bonus, etc., what I was seeking to return to my former company. She tells me she'll call back in an hour and not respond to any more texts from the manager or CEO. CEO text, did the business manager call you? Did she give you a piece of her mind? Manager text, I bet the business manager is going to make you personally pay for that fine. The business manager calls me back on a conference call and asks, what do you need to finish this project? Software, data, tools, etc.? I give her a list of everything I need. I answer other questions related to the project. She says, here's the plan. We're going to offer you a contract to finish this API for us by the end of the year for double the hourly rate you asked. If you can finish by 1231, we'll give you the signing bonus. After the new year, we'll see where we are staffing-wise, and maybe we can find you a spot, but there's no guarantee, especially if you do not the project. Is that a deal? I agree to the terms. I inform to put terms in writing, and I can start as soon as IT gives me a virtual machine. The business manager says no problem. Legal check the contract and there's a clause stating if your former company is unable to perform a function which they agreed to do, we're able to outsource it to a third party and charge the company for it. I just need them to state they're unable to perform the API function, and we will bill them for your time. The next story is... Fired for being fat. Backstory. I'm a woman in my mid-30s and very overweight. Not to the point of handicap, but I'm a big gal. I work at a company with around 25 employees and have been here for 8 years. Recently, the business was sold to a larger corporation, who sent their own people in for management roles after laying off our entire management team, consisting of 4 people. I work with clients in the field, 
and have a good work record and my clients like me, and I have built relationships with them. Turn to today. I get called into the office of one of the new managers, who tells me my appearance isn't a good fit for a client-facing role, and I can either take a pay cut and work in the call center, or take unpaid leave and come back after I've lost a considerable amount of weight. I was floored. I've never had a client have an issue with my weight, at least outwardly, and I'm good at my job. I meet all productivity goals and have never even received a write-up in my eight years. I pushed and asked him if there had been any complaints, to which he said no, but they want to head off any future issues which may arise. I said straight up, so you're punishing me because I'm fat? Are you also demoting obese male coworker in the same role as me? He said no and didn't answer when I asked why the situation was different. I left fuming and told him I was going home for the rest of the day to think about things. I spoke with the law office my sister recommended this morning and I want to sue. Update. The Monday following the incident, I was asked to come speak with a VP of HR I'd never met and only knew by name because they worked directly for the company that bought ours out. When I walked into the conference room, there were four people waiting for me, two of which I was told was part of legal. What I didn't realize is my friend who I mentioned in the comments of the other post ended up saying something to another coworker because he was so horrified at the situation, even though I told him to keep it secret. This information ended up making its way up the chain and was not taken well to say the least. I was asked to explain exactly what happened, who I told and asked a lot of questions. Everything I said seemed to make them very uncomfortable, especially when I told them I was in touch with a lawyer. They had me leave the room for nearly 40 minutes and then called me back in and let me know they were very concerned about this situation and assured me it was an isolated power trip basically. This is the holy SH part. They say that due to my long tenure in my position, knowledge of how the team works, and my relationship with clients, that they felt I would be a good fit for the position the jerk manager sat in and if I wanted the position it was mine, is their way of saying sorry. They also made sure to mention the large salary increase and bonuses that would come with this. I took a couple minutes to think about it and took the offer. I found out that this jerk manager was fired. By the way, I'm not stupid. I know they did this so I wouldn't take any legal action against them, but I love my job and don't blame them for the actions of a 20-something on a power trip. I also know it came down to a he said, she said, and would have been a hard case to prove. There's going to be a company-wide training on gender and interpersonal relations, and I finally have an office with a door I can actually close. I'm in the field a lot less now, so I guess the jerk got what he wanted. The last story is, call the police on me, have your car towed. I was showering this morning and I like to have music on my phone while I shower. The music was playing on my iPhone X on the bathroom counter, not on a speaker or anything. I keep the window open for ventilation. The lady that lives two houses away from me was walking her dog and apparently could hear my music. It's coming from an iPhone, so it's really not very loud. I can barely hear it in the shower. Ultimately, she called the police and complained that I was blasting music at 6 a.m. and waking all the neighbors. First of all, I've lived here for 15 years and I know all the neighbors. She's lived here for two months and has been a total Karen the whole time to all of us. Anyways, her house only has one parking spot, but she has two cars. There's a spot on my property, but I have a very clear sign that says no parking violators will be towed at owner's expense. She's parked here before and I've let it slide because I don't want to make waves with my neighbors. Well, the police showed up and she showed the police a video she took this morning. An officer and I laughed privately as he told me how ridiculous she was being. Then I noticed her car was in my spot. Her car just got towed away. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.